Okay, welcome everybody to the seminar today. Uh, our speaker today is Masanori Hanada. Uh, we actually hoped he would give us give the talk in the previous semester, but it's probably is better. So he has promised that he is going to announce some breakthrough result today uh, on on matrix or numerical simulations of matrix models. Actually, confirm it's an M theory. Uh, so, so just over to Masanori then. Okay, thank you, very, thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, I want to say it's a kind of breakthrough, but at the same time, in order to make a bigger uh, claim, it uh, become a bit speculative. <laughs> so maybe we can uh, have a lot of discussion during uh, this talk and you know make sure that it's uh, correct uh, if uh, it's really breakthrough. And this is a paper in preparation by uh, the, uh, the many people here. And the umbrella of Monte Carlo string M30 collaboration. And among them, uh, Hiromasa Watanabe is in a postdoc market this year. So if you have extra money to hire uh, and somebody and looking for a good postdoc, maybe you can uh, see his publication list. So this is outline. So first, uh, I just briefly explain uh, what is the zero brain matrix model, which we studied mainly today and how it would be, can be related to QA string or M theory. And I want to make a somewhat speculative claim that if M theory and this diesel brain matrix model is really dual to M theory, not just a string theory, but also M theory, then this theory should have a confinement phase. And uh, to make this argument, we have to uh, use dual gravity picture. And the dual gravity picture is not 100% clear at this moment. So that's a reason my argument becomes somewhat speculative. But I think it's a, a reason, at least a qualitative level, it's OK, I think. And uh, we actually perform a Monte Carlo simulation for this matrix model and uh, find the confined phase, which is a non-trivial consequence of the M theory description of this matrix model. And I will uh, uh, make, uh, I want to make uh, this statement stronger. So we consider so called the BMN matrix model, which is uh, closely related to BFSS and other extra evidence for existence of this confined phase. Diesel brain matrix model is often called the BFSS matrix model as well. Uh, BFSS comes from Banks, Fisher, Schenker, and Saskin. And the Lagrangian is this. So this is a matrix model. So it's not a QFT. We don't have a spatial dimension. We only have a time direction. And the Lagrangian is uh, like this. So it's a, uh, this DT is a covariant derivative. For scalar field, this X is a N by N uh, matrix. And this phi is a ferromanic matrix, which is also n by n. And this alpha and the beta run from 1 to 16. And this is a very standard matrix model, which is uh, obtained by dimensionally reducing 4D maximal super mills or 10 dimensional n equals to 1 super mills. Historically, uh, this model was introduced as a matrix regularization of super membrane by Dwight, Hoppe, and Nicola in 1988. And so this was before M theory, but uh, now we know that M theory is related to super membrane. So in retrospect, connection was you know, it, uh, already, is, some co connection was suggested at the time, because although people didn't know M theory. And uh, in 1966, Banks, Fisher, and Schenker, and Saskin kind of uh, rediscovered this model as a matrix model, as a matrix model of M theory. They try to use uh, this matrix model to define M theory non perturbatively And uh, clearly, as Denis Saskin uh, wanted to uh, promote it as a, a, a concrete realization of a holographic principle, which he suggested several years before this time. And uh, in 1990, 1998, after proposal of uh, uh, gauge gravity duality in the uh, sense of Mardasena, uh, Itzaki, Mardasena, Zonesha, and Yankilovich uh, suggested that this model can be 
uh, related to gravity using more uh, something familiar to us today. It's a you know, Maldacena type duality. And it can be dual to type 2A black zero brain near to fifth limit, like in a usual ADS CFT, though, though this is not CFT and the dual is not ADS. And uh, also, they they also, here I wrote only type 2A, but uh, they also suggested that uh, this model should describe M theory uh, somewhat related to the line these people discussed. Uh, in the Itzaki Mardasena Zonesha Yankilovich paper, they considered actually generic P plus one dimensional supermules, and the P equal to zero is a matrix model. And they discussed that quite generally, these models, which can be regarded as a system of uh, DP brain and the strings, can be dual to type black P brain in type 2A or type 2B string. Whether it's a type 2A or type 2B, it depends whether this P is uh, even or out. And if we take P equals to 3, black 3 brain background is ADS 5 cross S5. So P equals to 3 case is uh, the most established ADS 5 shift for correspondence. But they suggested that other P is also fine. And this is uh, their paper. And we will focus on P equals to 0 from now on. Okay. And uh, when P is zero, uh, there's uh, one big difference from uh, uh, ADS5 shift for correspondence. The big difference is that the uh, coupling constant, this lambda is to first coupling, which is GM is square times N, it has mass dimension. Because uh, Lagrangian action is uh, obtained from Lagrangian. And this was something like uh, dtx square minus commutator square da da da. And uh, this term is something like a field of strength square. So this part has a mass dimension of four. And this part has a mass dimension minus one because uh, you know, time is inverse of mass. And uh, to match the dimension, we need uh, one over G squared here. It's so one over G squared appear like this, but the uh, action is dimensionless. And here, this part, so if it's a four dimensional integral, this uh, must be false, uh, can be compensated by DT and the three dimensional special integral, but we don't have a special integral now. So this part has to carry mass dimension. So this has to carry mass Q power. Okay, so Yamil's coupling is dimension four, except for four dimension. And this coupling constant introduces some energy scale. If it were QCD, we have a dynamically generated scale, lambda QCD, and this lambda plays a similar role. Okay, but this is uh, already in the theory as a bare parameter. Because this lambda has a mass to this three dimension, we can uh, take a combination of uh, lambda and uh, e to the minus three. Then this becomes a dimensionless quantity, and this quantity serves a sort of dimensionless effective coupling. So low energy, so making E small or making lambda large is essentially the same thing because this combination matters. So low energy is a strong coupling. And if we look at the black zero brain solution in type 2A supergram. In type 2A supergravity, uh, in terms of this uh, uh, matrix model, uh, parameter lambda, the temperature T, energy is uh, written like this. So some, co some calculable constant times n squared times the strange power of t, but the dimension is matched with this strange power of lambda, okay? because lambda has a uh, mass dimension. So yeah. temperature has what mass dimension. What is the temperature? Where is the temperature coming from? Like ah, OK. So temperature in the gravity side is Hawking temperature. And the Yamino theory side, you can also introduce temperature in a standard manner. Okay. Yeah. 
so this is a Hawking temperature in, black, in, the, in terms of black hole. And it's uh, identified with the temperature in Yamil theory side. So in Yamil side, uh, you can uh, make time, time temporal direction to be imaginary circle, and you can uh, compactify that direction and take a compact equation, uh, size of compact equation to be one over temperature in Euclidean path integral. Temperature defined this way in a uh, gauge theory side, and uh, uh, temperature, Hawking temperature should agree. That's a part of the uh, propo uh, Marada Senar proposal. A more strictly speaking, it's Aki Marda Sena's proposal. Okay, so and uh, so energy and the temperature of a black zero brain is related like this. But then you can see uh, they also calculate the uh, size of a black hole compared to string scale. Then they, they call this combination to be one of effective coupling. This is used by using this. So this combination is appearing here. Okay, so if uh, energy becomes small, uh, then uh, this combination becomes small. So a black hole is too small compared. No, no. If if energy becomes small, then this combination becomes uh, small. Yes, yes, that's correct. So if energy becomes small, then this con uh, con combination becomes small. That would mean black hole is much bigger than com compared to string scale. So a uh, string look like a point, point cut particle compared to gravity uh, black hole. So you, we can forget about alpha prime correction. But at the same time, Dilaton measured at the black hole horizon actually increases when this uh, dimensionless energy goes down. So at the, so I say the low energy is a strong coupling, but actually if this combination becomes small, so th that this combination is small means low, low energy, then because we have a negative power here, you should see, look at this minus here, okay? This combination becomes large. So string coupling becomes large. So actually low energy is a strong coupling. And the low energy is where uh, we would expect uh, M theory. So I'm a question here. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, because the dilaton becomes strong, right? Uh, you cannot trust the supergravity computation, right? Uh, to compute this end. So I'm a bit confused. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's very good. So in order to trust, so here I said we are talking about black zero brain. Okay. In order to trust this black zero brain solution, this has to be small and this has to be small. So only in a limited uh, uh, energy range, we can use uh, type 2 as a gravity. And when this becomes big, that would mean very strongly coupled, uh, strongly coupled the type 2 string. But uh, uh, that, that would mean M theory cycle becomes big. Okay, okay so you thanks. have to use the M theory to study at, if we go very low energy. But uh, uh, by taking n to be sufficiently large, we can still use 11 dimensional supergravity as a good description. I see. Yeah. Okay. And so this is a picture taken from uh, uh, this good, nice paper by uh, Itzaki, Marada Sena, Zonensha, and Yankirovich. This direction is a log GF. G, G effective is essential energy. And this direction is log N matrix size. And uh, they say that uh, so uh, this side is a strong coupling. This side is weak coupling. And at weak coupling, we can use a perturbative method in gauge theory. And in uh, some uh, window, so N should be like sufficiently large. If N is very small, then uh, string correction cannot be ignored. But if N is sufficiently large and the energy is sitting in certain range, then type 2 M black zero brain gives good description for this system. And at some point, if uh, energy becomes very low, this uh, effective coupling becomes large, then Dilaton becomes large, this Dilaton becomes large, then 
uh, weakly coupled string theory disk structure is not good anymore. And we have to go to M theory. And uh, uh, they claim that eventually black zero brain becomes uh, 11 dimensional super, 11 dimensional super sweet black hole in M theory. This is what is proposed in this paper. Okay, and uh, at small energy is a small black hole. If black hole becomes if you can imagine like if black hole becomes smaller and smaller gradually, <laughs> if it becomes a smaller time theory cycle, you need the information of the dimension. But if black hole is very large, then you don't really have to care about the M theory cycle. And so they're um, making that kind of argument in more precise manner. And as a way, I am uh, repeating this uh, two foot coupling lambda has a mass dimension. So when we say tofu to large end limit, we have to uh, make meaning very precise. One way to say that is lambda tofu coupling is fixed as when energy is buried, and the temperature is also fixed, and the ener then energy scales like n squared. This is a standard tofu coupling, tofu to scaling. Or because this tofu coupling gives uh, somehow a kind of unit of energy scale, You can imagine that this uh, just take this lambda to be one. This is just a redefinition of the field. And then this dimensionless temperature is fixed to order one. And the dimensionless energy scales like greater square. They are equivalent. And the, such a scaling is uh, called the two foot scaling in this case. Okay, I have a very stupid question here. So, uh, but energy and temperature are not independent, right? Uh, how do we know a priori this is going to work? Uh, so precise statement, actually that, that's very good. And uh, uh, precise statement is as long as we consider a uh, deconfined phase, if temperature is fixed to n, uh, t, t fixed to one, in this theory, we know that uh, energy scales like n square. And that's a dynamical question whether, so like uh, two foot, in a standard total force counting, you can, uh, for example, draw various uh, Feynman diagram and calculate uh, N dependence, right? And in standard total force counting, we can determine that uh, operator which corresponds to energy should return value N squared. And uh, even when you have classical gravity, you know, the, the, there are many different large end limits. And the, in M3 limit of ABGM, actually, uh, probably you take t to be order n to the zero, but then uh, uh, energy is n to the three halves. And lambda is probably n in <laughs> theory region. So that's a highly dynamical question, actually. Yes. But in this yeah, case of EMLs, uh, standard two foot counting can be applied. But actually, this is a very subtle case. And I will claim that even when these two are satisfied, something else can appear here. I will mention that. Actually, from here. Oh, hi. Yes, it's me. Hi there. Hi, Masanori. Hi. hi. Um, yeah, just, I mean, just, um, I think, again, uh, maybe with that question, I wouldn't say E going like N squared is the tough limit. I think the tough limit is taking large n, and if you see e going like n squared, then maybe you think you're in a deconfined phase. But you know, for example, in the BMN model where you have a mass, there's a confining phase where mm -hmm. e goes like some other power of n squared. So maybe so I think it just I think it just means that physical quantities have a scaling with n. I so, would call that the. the so tofu. this probably you don't disagree that this is a tofu to scaling. And in the confining phase of this theory, this appear as a dynamical consequence. I mean, I'm not, even, I'm not even sure I would say t going like n to the zero is tough scaling, is it? I mean, if I could take I, t I, as some other power of n as I take n to infinity. My tough scaling probably uh, the different. Uh, Definition uh, most people agree is the foot counting 
uh, holes, then the first, that the first counting hole would mean uh, one gene, one addition of one genus. Genus one would lead to one by n squared. And if we look at the, this expression here, if this dimensionless energy is n squared, then this combination is one. So dilaton is one over n. So what genus, one genus corresponds to one over n squared. In that sense, the standard to push the counting holes there. So then I would say here, I'm saying to push the limit, meaning that the standard to push the counting. And in this case, uh, taking this scaling is uh, sufficient for that. So we don't have to use the name to push the large n limit if we if you don't like it. You could just say large n limit. Large n limit, yes. And there can be various large n limit. And there is some large n limit is good for type two. By taking some large n limit, we can see type two A. And by taking another large n limit, we should be able to see anything. That's what I want to say. From here. On. Thank you. And uh, so maybe uh, some people don't like this word for the large and limit, but uh, let me just use it. So, so here I fixed it, or more precisely, this uh, this is fixed. And so this is actually secretly this is here. So this is dimensionless effective combination, uh, dimensionless temperature, and dimensionless energy. And in the confined uh, uh, phase of this model, if we take this limit, then E divided by N squared is order one, and it gradually goes to zero temperature. And this is extreme limit in terms of the type two black zero brain. And the Polyakov loop, which is defined from a, a gauge field in this way, Polyakov, that Polyakov loop with non-zero would mean the usual definition of uh, the confined phase. Okay, and it gradually goes down and reaches at zero temperature. So it looks like uh, uh, this system is deconfined at any temperature. And maybe this zero temperature is border between confined and deconfined phase. But uh, I, want... I have a very stupid question again. So uh, okay. if you, uh, how do you compute the Polyakov loop? I mean, typically you take A0 is equal to zero gauge, but then... Uh, uh, so actually... good, good, good. So actually A0 equals to zero gauge, uh, is uh, so when the time direction is non compact, you can take that. Uh, you can uh, import such gauge, mm -hmm. but if a time direction is a compact, actually, you cannot really do it. So imagine yeah, okay. that you have, uh, yeah, and the Polyakov loop, imagine you have a lattice, okay, and you have a ut, so you, you at the t equals to one, ut at the t equals to two, and so on. And you have you have U T. So you you multiply link variables and take trace. This is a definition of Polyakov loop in terms of lattice. And each U is something like uh, exponential I A T times lattice spacing. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And yeah. And uh, this U. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you already are noticed, but you, it it it's transformed like a. Uh, something like this. And by using this degrees of gauge degrees of freedom, you can take this to be one, this to be one identity, and mm. all others can be taken identity except for the last one mm. because of periodic cycle, uh, periodic boundary condition. You cannot mm. set all link variables to be identity. Mm. That's a Polyakov loop degrees of freedom. So each AT is not a gauge invariant, but this Polyakov loop is gauge invariant. Okay, thanks, yeah. Okay, great. So I want to claim that we expect confined phase as well here. And at the large, strict large end limit, at any temperature, confined phase also exists. But strictly speaking, this has a smaller free energy. So this deconfined phase is thermodynamically more important. But still, uh, uh, still, uh, stable uh, saddle exists. 
as qualifying phase. And the energy is zero and the P is zero. I want to claim that such phase should exist. And I want to give you some evidence that uh, such phase can actually be observed by numerical simulation. But, but if you're already taking a large N limit, okay, maybe I'm not, uh, maybe, okay, you're not computing it exactly. So you know that when such a thing will exist. You're not doing a large N limit computation, you're doing an exact computation. That's why you. I mean, uh, pr probably uh, in, in uh, following a few slides, meaning becomes clearer, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, this is a matrix model. So, uh, phase transition, uh, strictly speaking, phase transition can make sense only in the large N limit. But if N is you know, sufficiently large, we can see uh, meta state phases. I mean, if, uh, there can be multiple uh, uh, saddles. Okay, and at finite end, their separation is not 100% uh, uh, precise, but you know, uh, up to one minor correction, we can define such notion. And uh, what the picture I want to show from now is that uh, this is the type to be uh, type to a black zero brain, which is free energy minimum. Okay, but uh, there is free energy maximum, or uh, it's a saddle. So uh, when energy is change, this is uh, maximum. If you have other parameters, for other parameters, it's minimum. But this, with, with respect to energy, there is some free energy maximum and another minimum. And this maximum is separating these two minima. So we imagine something like uh, this. Something like this. So this phase, is this, this phase is this, and this phase is this, and this maximum is here. So the red line is not continuous according to you. Red line? The red line is not continuous because- It doesn't right. go down to zero. Ah, okay. So, but you showed the, in the previous picture, that's what we expect, but- That's a strict large N limit. So here I used to, a little bit smaller N. Ah, <laughs> and okay. in the next slide, this N becomes a bit bigger. Ah, so and the it, end uh, point keeps moving and- uh, Like you can imagine that this is, say N equals to 100. And in the next slide, I will show the situation where N is 1,000. And ah, then okay. 10,000. And eventually- and if and the dotted energy. yellow line, you also find it explicitly uh, when you do the computation, the dotted uh, yellow yes, line I, also appears. So. Yes, we can find it explicitly, and I will explain how to do that. So this is n equals to infinity. And this is large but finite n. So as this n become increases, so here, if you compare these two pictures, this part goes down, this part goes up slightly. And as n becomes even larger, this part goes even smaller, this part becomes even larger. And eventually this phase become, con stretches to all the way down to zero in the large end limit. And this phase stretches to infinity in the large end limit. This is a picture we want to suggest, propose. And uh, we claim that this free energy minimum, this minimum is type to a super string phase. And these two phases, this minimum, which is a quote unquote confined phase, and this uh, free energy maximum, they are related to M theory. And in order to understand that, we have to be a bit careful about uh, a subtle difference between canonical and microcanonical ensembles. Microcanonical ensemble means energy is a tunable parameter, and the temperature is determined as a function of energy. And the micro uh, at the fi each fixed energy, we maximize entropy S. Okay, as number number of uh, state with the energy with the energy e is uh, omega e which is exponential s e 
and of course, uh, uh, there can be not just energy, but there can be several other parameters to uh, describe fixed energy space, but the typical uh, state. So what the uh, minimum maximum of uh, entropy uh, correspond to in a gravity side correspond to some classical solution. Okay, and uh, typically one specific configuration dominates uh, this density of state. Okay, and such phase is uh, realized in microcanonical ensemble at fixed energy. And the microcanonical temperature is determined by using this relation. Uh, on the other hand, in canonical ensemble, temperature T is a tunable parameter. And uh, energy is defined, determined as a function of temperature. And the free energy should be minimized. So in this picture, uh, in microcanonical case, we tune this parameter. And so we fix energy, and then we can find one temperature corresponding to this. In canonical ensemble, we fix temperature and determine energy. And around here, there can be different uh, multiple values of energy, which can be realized. But the uh, thermodynamically favorable one is obtained by minimizing free energy. Oops, Oops sorry. Project that I by mistake uh, disconnected. Okay, and uh, let's see. Uh, and in uh, some, we this subtle difference will be important. And in order to understand this situation more precisely, I can give you some uh, better established examples where such a, a dif subtle difference matters, and we know how uh, interesting physics can be uh, obtained by precisely uh, distinguishing microcanonical ensemble and canonical ensemble. Okay, and the uh, most famous example is uh, four-dimensional super mills on three sphere and the type 2B super string. And uh, actually we have a very similar phase diagram. The black hole in ADS5 process five correspond to thermodynamics of the four dn for super mills. And the microcanonical ensemble, which means we uh, look this diagram uh, by changing this energy as a controlling parameter, is something like this. So if uh, energy divided by n squared is uh, almost zero, this is co uh, essentially confined phase and we see graviton gas. And uh, as energy goes up at some point, uh, hydrogen string disappears. Hydrogen string is a free string, free long string, very long and complicated shape. And if uh, energy becomes uh, sufficiently large, then uh, you know string intersect with itself many, many times. So interaction is not negligible. And we should use uh, uh, we should regard it as black hole. But still, if black hole is much smaller than ADS5 cross S5, it looks like a small black hole in a flat 10 dimensional space time. So we can uh, use uh, Schubert shield solution as approximation. And the energy should uh, behave like n squared times t to the minus seven. This n squared is one over g newton for 10 dimension. And uh, eventually uh, this black hole becomes big. And then at some point it uh, fills the S5 direction and uh, wrap on S5. So this is a Gregory Laframe type transition. And then it becomes a large black hole. And uh, at some point, if black hole becomes sufficiently large, specific heat turns to positive. Interesting thing is here, specific heat is negative. So if you have a super sheet of black hole, if black hole becomes a bigger and higher energy, temperature goes down. But if, if in the ADS super sheet of black hole phase, specific heat is positive. If energy goes up, Temperature goes up. This is microcanonical phase diagram. And typically, we say that uh, such a black hole with a negative specific heat is unstable because by emitting Hawking radiation, temperature can go up. And then, so if you put a small black hole in a heat bath, then 
summer radiation, uh, Hawking radiation is emitted, then temperature goes up, of a black hole goes up. Then because the temperature become, of a black hole becomes higher, then it can emit uh, Hawking radiation even uh, more. And uh, that uh, the radiation just uh, speeds up and uh, completely evaporate. That's a normal intuition. And that is true in asymptotically flat space. But uh, uh, Horowitz uh, uh, pointed out, because ADS space-time is like finite box, if black hole is not too small, if some amount of radiation is emitted, then uh, radiation, you know, because of box size is finite, radiation, finite density of ra radiation with a finite density and the black hole can be in thermal equilibrium. So small black hole, black hole does not completely evaporate. So my, my, as a micro canonical state, such small black hole with negative specific heat can exist as a stable state. So if we, we have a small black hole, it has a bigger entropy than graviton gas with the same energy. And he made such calculation. Okay, so point is that this is a small black hole phase and also hydrogen string, they can be they can exist very in a very defined manner in micro canonical ensemble. So this is a micro canonical phase diagram. So it's still it's a phase phase mi mixture, right? That's uh so strictly, strictly speaking, I'm saying this is a small black hole, but strictly speaking, small black hole plus some amount of uh, Hawking radiation. But uh, uh, if you calculate entropy, almost all entropy is carried by this part. Radiation isn't carrying uh, much energy or entropy. So in that sense, you can forget about radiation. But uh, as you uh, already, I think you already realize that uh, if box becomes very large compared to black hole, then graviton gas cannot be ignored, right? So that the uh, box become large would correspond to coupling constant lambda becomes large. And if the first coupling increases some uh, very fast, like uh, some positive power when actually box becomes really large and then complete evaporation is allowed below some energy. So this is what the uh, uh, Horowitz uh, found in 1999. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> that was really nice. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice. You know, that's a, make me feel I want to go to India even more. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds like I don't know, festival or food or whatever. Anyway, so this is uh, what the Horowitz found. Okay, and of course, uh, 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 ah, and then the uh, question is, uh, what is this intermediate phase in canonical ensemble where T is a controlling parameter? So as I said, uh, can, in micro canonical ensemble, energy is varied. Canonical in canonical ensemble, temperature is varied, okay? And we want to minimize free energy in canonical ensemble. But the first in micro canonical ensemble, so what would be the meaning of a micro canonical temperature in canonical ensemble? So this was a definition of a micro canonical temperature. And by taking a derivative, this derivative, we can calculate the specific heat capacity. Okay, and in a small black hole phase, this is negative. In uh, large black hole phase, it is positive. Okay, so there can be phases with a positive space heat and a negative space heat in micro canonical ensemble. In canonical ensemble, uh, so in order to relate the canonical and the micro canonical ensemble, we would uh, take this uh, omega e, which is uh, by definition exponential of entropy, and we multiply uh, Boltzmann weight and uh, take some. This is a definition of a canonical partial function. And then by using this f, we, we, we get this. So, so if f is minimized, such a uh, configuration should, uh, such energy would dominate this micro canonical path integral. Okay, micro canonical partial, uh, sorry, canonical partial function is dominated 
by uh, energy, value of energy which minimizes this. So first, uh, let's uh, uh, take an extremum of this f as a function of energy. So we take a derivative with respect to energy, fixing a canonical temperature. Then this becomes one, and this part is actually from this, from this, it becomes one over microcanonical temperature. So this is this. So free energy maximum or minimum is obtained at the body of energy where microcanonical temperature agree with canonical temperature. So this is how microcanonical ensemble and canonical ensemble are related formally. And furthermore, if we take derivative with respect to E once more, this part disappears and we take a derivative of this part. And actually we get the heat capacity here. So heat capacity is related to second derivative of free energy with respect to energy. And if specific heat capacity, this is a positive, then free energy is minimized. If this is negative, free energy is maximized. So this uh, intermediate phase, which had the negative heat capacity in microcanonical ensemble, actually give free energy maximum. And uh, these phases, which had the positive specific heat, is free energy minimum. So these phases are favored in canonical ensemble. And this phase is uh, not favored. But uh, this maximum is important because, because of this maximum, if we uh, look at the fixed temperature and the plot, uh, plot the free energy as a function of energy, then we see two, like this kind of two minimal solution. And uh, around here, so the, the, this minimum is this, this minimum is this, and this maximum corresponds to this. And because of this maximum, these two phases are well separated. And both of them can use this state. Okay, so this, and uh, uh, at large end, uh, difference of uh, uh, this height becomes infinitely large. So tunneling is uh, parametrically suppressed. Okay, so those two phases, both phases can coexist at large end in a very stable manner. And because this highest temperature of uh, uh, these two phases increases with n at large n we get this kind of phase structure so this uh, uh, confined phase can exist at any temperature and in this specific case uh, the confined phase exists uh, at, doesn't extend to zero temperature and here temperature is like one over r of s3 in this specific case. But in the case of BFSS, I think this goes to zero. So this was for the n equals to four. And if you look at ABJM, we can make a similar argument. So this is a canonical phase diagram for ABJM. When Horowitz wrote uh, his paper in 1999, ABJM didn't exist, but uh, <laughs> he made the argument in gravity side, we can just use duality to and combine ABGM paper and the Horowitz paper to draw this phase diagram. And again, this highest temperature increases with N. And in the large limit, we get this kind of phase diagram. Both in string theory and M theory, we get this kind of phase diagram. And I want to suggest something similar should be happening in uh, BFSS matrix model. But in the case of BFS symmetric model, gravity side is more complicated. So my argument has to become somewhat speculative. So first of all- The, uh, reason, uh, the reason the gravity side is complicated is that you cannot really trust the asymptotic limit or, or this is, I mean, you don't- So geometry is complicated or, or, because in the case of AD, uh, for the n equals to four uh, or uh, ABGM, Dual is ADS5 cross S5 or ADS4 cross S7. And uh, 
you know, ADS <laughs> is much simpler. But uh, if you just look at the dual of black zero brain, then, for example, string coupling changes with uh, as a function of radial coordinate. And we don't really have a simple product structure. Yeah, so you mean that uh, the asymptotically it grows, right? The, the, you can still trust the entropy computation or? Yeah, that, that, that's one. So but, but, uh, boundary behavior is more complicated. And furthermore, in the case of 4 n equals to 4, uh, we just had to use uh, type 2b. And in the case of ABGM, we just had to use uh, uh, M theory. So the background, the, uh, the other space time was always 10 dimension or always 11 dimension. And the VFSS has a phase transition between string and M. And of course, it makes the physics richer. But at the same time, uh, analysis becomes very complicated. I see. You cannot measure the energy, which is measured asymptotically, and this is the yes. that becomes. Uh, yeah, and also I'm not sure. Even though in a low energy limit, we vaguely say there is M theory, but uh, what kind of M theory background that can be actually tricky, and that's uh, related to what I am saying in this slide. So uh, in a BFSS matrix model, potential term was something like trace x squared. This is a potential. And if commutator is zero, this potential is zero. And uh, this uh, gives a classical flat direction. So if you uh, take uh, matrices to be simultaneously diagonalizable, then the potential value of potential doesn't depend on the uh, uh, value of the eigen, doesn't depend on eigenvalues. And eigenvalues can be arbitrary value. So you cannot fix the vacuum. OK. And uh, that problem remains, survives even at the large end limit because of supersymmetry. So pre precise statement is, uh, if we take a simultaneously diagonal background and separate eigenvalues very far, energy can approach zero asymptotically close to zero. So eigenvalue can just roll, uh, run away. At the same time, uh, bound state of all D0 brain is, can exist. And that gives uh, lowest energy. But uh, almost, uh, th there are many almost zero energy state, which correspond to runaway behavior of D0 brains. So we we look at the bound state of these brains, and uh, at least empirically, in the large end limit, that bound state is stable. But at the finite end, occasionally these are uh, run up, run away. But we consider the bound state of all these brains. Okay, that's the state we consider. That is effectively putting the system in a box. Like uh, in uh, ADS four, uh, ADS five shifted for correspondence. And uh, if you consider other background, different physics may uh, may appear. But uh, for to make a story concrete, we are focusing on this specific situation. All the eigenvalues are sitting together, and in our Monte Carlo simulation, we carefully monitor behave the value by monitor eigenvalues. And to make sure that the, uh, all these brains, uh, these brains are forming bound state. Okay. And this is a phase diagram we suggest. So first uh, we have a type two a black zero brain, but when uh, energy becomes small or temperature be becomes uh, low, uh, dilaton becomes large. So we have to go uh, go to eleven dimensional description. And uh, then, but uh, if so, 11th dimension opens up. But if 11th dimension is not very big compared to black hole, then still a black hole can wrap on 11th dimension. So, some sort of a black string solution is a good description. 
And if uh, M3 circle becomes much larger than black hole uh, uh, horizon scale, then kind of Gregory Laframe instability along M3 circle takes place, and the 11 dimensional black hole solution becomes better. And then at some point, if it becomes too small, then it should become graviton gas in 11 dimension. I think this is what we expect. Yeah, thanks for this very nice description. I still have a question because in the initial slides, you were saying in the large and like limit, this line should go to, uh, ah, maybe it is consistent because this temperature is proportional to n to the power minus 10 by 21. Yes, I so see. this is negative. Ah, okay. This is negative. Uh, I see it. Uh, I see. Okay. And this is positive. All right. Okay. <laughs> now, now, now I get it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, but uh, of course, gra around here or around here, gravity side is rather complicated. So precise power may be wrong. But I think this should go down. This is you know this should be negative. This should be positive. That doesn't change even if uh, uh, we made some miscalculation. I think. But you can and, compute these powers, right? In principle, in your way, in your method. Uh, numerically, on matrix model side, we should be able to determine. But at the same time, of course, uh, this power is not small. And uh, <laughs> so numerically, it's hard to determine such thing very precisely. But in principle, it's doable. And uh, so vaguely, we imagine this kind of behavior. And uh, this part, this this part corresponds to 11 dimensional geometry. So this uh, this minimum, new minimum, and the maximum should be M theory phase. This is our claim. And uh, if we look at so more precisely speaking, there are three critical temperatures. So Usual critical temperature TC is where uh, two minima have the same free energy. So above this critical temperature, this is global minimum. Below this uh, critical temperature, this is global minimum. And this is just local minimum, and this is just local minimum. OK, and that's a definition of T critical. And there is a, say, a lowest temperature of the confined phase, which we would call T2 and the highest temperature of the confined phase, which we would call T1. And between Tc and T1, in this temperature range, uh, this phase is a local minimum, so which has a bigger free energy compared to black zero brain. And this maximum is here. And if we go low temperature phase, uh, this should become a true minimum. This part should become true minimum. So I want to show some of the numerical evidence for this picture. And we need to tame flat direction uh, because we want to see confined phase. And we want to see the bound state of these range. Uh, usually, we just take n large enough. And uh, this is our strategy. So our largest n is actually 16. <laughs> but depending on temperature range, 16 is big enough to kill a uh, tame a runaway behavior. But later, we will consider the BMA in a matrix model. Actually, I already spent an hour, so maybe uh, this I may have to skip this part. But we can also introduce a BMA in a matrix model, which has a mass term and the flat direction is lifted. And we can make a better argument regarding this point in BMA in a matrix model. And another thing we have to be careful is because there are two minimum, if we do a Monte Carlo simulation, our simulation can be trapped in one of the minima. And we have to choose initial condition carefully. And depending on initial con condition, we can end up in different minima. Okay. And previously, we didn't imagine such minimums exist. So we studied only this. We studied only this minimum. And in a deconfined phase, first let me show this deconfined phase. So this minimum, okay, which is not related to M theory. So uh, there are uh, many papers, or like uh, you know, uh, Toby Wiseman is uh, in the audience. He also did a great job 
for the studying the confined phase. So this is uh, from a uh, 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 paper, our collaboration from 2016. This is a uh, temperature, this is energy, and this is a supergravity prediction. And the uh, energy calculated by Monte Carlo simulation go asymptotically close to this line. And this uh, deviation can be explained as a stringy alpha prime correction. So in this deconfined phase, agreement with the type 2A supergra uh, type 2A string seems to be very good. So we uh, we confidently say that the uh, type 2A is described by this matrix model. But the then question is uh, confined phase can be seen or not. If M theory is described by this theory, we should see confined phase. So we studied the, uh, uh, so this is new part. Okay, so this is a so-called Monte Carlo history. So in Monte Carlo simulation, we uh, prepare some initial con configuration and that configuration is a uh, uh, gradual change the little by little. And uh, we make uh, a lot of configurations, but uh, if we prepare a lot of configurations and take average, that should reproduce uh, uh, canonical path integral. A Euclidean path integral. So, but, and we can see that uh, for some specific initial condition, uh, at the te time temperature t equals 0 0.2, which is rather low temperature, we can see that uh, protocol loop start with a large value, but it comes down and trapped in a very small value. And uh, this blue line is R squared divided by 10. R squared is this. If this R squared becomes big, that would mean some eigenvalue of X is going up. Okay, so if this R diverges, that would mean flat direction is picked up. But we can see that in this simulation, R is stable all the way to here and gradually it starts to diverge. So beyond here, flat direction kicks in. What is the axis here? Sorry. Ah, it's a time, I see. The Monte Carlo time. Monte Carlo time, yes, yes. But uh, here, here, this is a bound state of all D0 brain. Okay, and it here it means that the bound state is quite metastable, right? Metastable, yes. yes. Metastable. And this is a SU ten model. This is a SU sixteen model. And in SU sixteen model, so far we haven't seen flat directions. It stays a bound state. In at least within our oh. simulation time. So uh, again, I was so it means that at finite time, none of the states are actually you shouldn't take them to be stable, and right? because there is a transition amplitude and ah uh, yes yes not... yes. So so we are talking about the metastable state. Yeah. So, so... We, we we wrote a such phase diagram, but actually there is a so so this this phase diagram apply only in a some some limited. So we are. In some sense, we are limiting uh, uh, path integral. So we are, we don't really perform full path integral, but we are, you can imagine exactly. that R, R square uh -huh. defined by uh, one over N dt trace x square. This, it, uh, this R square has to be some uh, cutoff value. This way we are, take, we are restricting path integral. And I in see, that restricted path integral, this phase diagram should be observed. Mm -hmm. But this is a, not a bug, it's a feature of the theory. This matrix model can have various different uh, states and we have to specify the state we are talking about. But it's quite remarkable that it is so flat, this R square value <laughs> until it's uh, the... Yes, yes. And actually in this temperature, in this temperature, if we look at the confined phase, actually we see pretty stable behavior, but uh, we couldn't really observe the confined phase. And uh, in the confined phase, the brains and the strings are excited. 
and you know they are moving around, then they, they, it can pick up uh, from direction. But in confined confined phase is like uh, all these zero brains are sitting on top of each other, and no strings, no thermal excitation, almost no thermal excitation. So they are not really moving. <laughs> and that's the reason. So if oh, okay. you know this uh, eigenvalue is location of these zero brains. So in the confined phase, these zero brains are moving, so flat direction can more easily be picked up. So actually, yes. And anyway, so we can see that the product of loop is close to zero. It's a good news. And uh, let's uh, try large n extrapolation. So first, large n and the continuum extrapolation. First, let's try uh, this red one points are energy, okay? And at each fixed n, we take continuum limit. This L is number of lattice points. So infinitely many lattice points would mean continuum limit, okay? And at each n, we extrapolate, we took infinite continuum extrapolation of these energy values. And then straight line fit is good and the continuum limit is zero. And we can do the same for n equals to 12. So these are simulation result, and we extrapolate it. So this direction is L, or more strictly speaking, it's one over L. And for n equals to 16, extrapolation isn't good, but actually this is, uh, this still has uh, a lot of numerical error. And uh, actually, uh, yesterday I, I talked to my collaborator and he, uh, he was saying that this is coming a little bit down and the result is getting consistent with zero. So at each fixed n, continuum extrapolation of energy is zero, almost zero. So of course, a continuum large end limit should also be zero, okay? But if it were deconfined phase, by using this type to a result, energy divided by n squared has to be 0 0.08 at this temperature. 0 0.08 is somewhere here. It's clearly different. What we observe is consistent with zero and clearly different from a uh, value at the confined phase. And we can also look at the Pryakov loop. In the case of Pryakov loop, at each fixed lattice size, we can uh, do nice large n extrapolation. So n equals to 10, 12, 16, and infinite. And the extrapolated value is consistent with zero. But uh, if we guess the value of P in the confined phase from a previous simulation, at this temperature, product of loop has to be 0 0.5, which is somewhere around here. But we see something clearly consistent with zero. So this is clearly different from what we found before, which should be dual to type two super string. And so our so, N was... Uh I have a question. So, uh, so, so you jumped into this confined or deconfined depending upon the start because you took cold start, I guess. Uh, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, if if we if we start with hot start, so we have both the possibilities. Uh, yes. Ending up and actually, even with the cold start, depend in the simulation we use a random number, and if we <laughs> when random number changes, sometimes we see this phase, sometimes we don't see this phase. Right. Actually, we tried a few times. And right. one observation, so it, it really depends on the initial condition and also random number. So every mm -hmm. time result can be different. Yeah. And in this parameter, our n was not to, because our n was not very big. n was uh, 10, 12, and 16. The flat direction was not free under control. Like uh, even uh, in this case, n equals to 10, you know, flat direction is uh, appearing here. And we couldn't really see stable deconfined phase. So we could observe the deconfined phase only at rather high temperature. And in low temperature region, we could see confined phase, but we couldn't see the confined phase. And probably because the flat direction is immediately picked up. Okay, so below t equals to 0 0.27. If we choose initial condition carefully, we could occasionally see confined phase, but otherwise we just see runaway behavior. 
if it's an uh, answer to your question. So we could just observe a confined phase in being phase asymmetric model, but we didn't see the confined phase simultaneously. So we haven't established uh, this picture yet. We saw only one phase. But we are, I'm running out of time. So uh, just uh, really briefly mention BMN matrix model. What we did was we considered the BMN matrix model, which is a sort of a mass deformation of the BFSS matrix model. And then problem of flat direction become a bit milder. And instead, fuzzy sphere configuration <laughs> can appear in this setup. So we have to uh, avoid the tunneling to fuzzy sphere, but that was relatively easy. And then uh, we had one parameter mu. And uh, depending on the uh, parameter mu, if mu is 1.0, here we can see two peaks. So this is the confined peak. This is confined peak. And the mu equals 0 0.5, this is a confined peak. This is the confined peak. So this is a histogram of a Krakow flow. So we di did a simulation and uh, plotted the distribution of a value of a Krakow flow observed. And we could see this uh, clear two peak signal, which is uh, which can be used to determine uh, critical temperature. And uh, for this model, there is a, a dual gravity prediction based on type two supergravity done by Costa, Greenspan, Penedones, and Santos, and that is this line. And the uh, large mu corresponds to weak coupling, and weak coupling perturbation is possible. And our simulation result about TC as a function of the deformation parameter mu, at weak up, large mu is weak coupling. And at weak coupling, we could reproduce a perturbative calculation. And gradually, we see deviation from a perturbative calculation. And then around here, we could see convergence to uh, gravity result. But here, we see some deviation. But the point is that their result is n equals infinity and using uh, type 2a. Our n is not very big, so we have to see some deviation, and which should be caused by M3 effect. <laughs> and uh, if we calculate uh, these values, like n to the minus 10 over 21, or n to the 2 over 9, for n equals to 12, these, are, these points are n equals to 12. This combination is uh, 0 0.3. This is 1.7. So we should see some order one number. T, t critical should be some order one number around here. So this uh, finite, this can be regarded as a finite end correction, and this de deviation is welcomed. And actually, if M30 uh, description is actually correct, then we have to see such a deviation. And this uh, answer to uh, Ian's question. So. We observed the uh, confined phase and the confined phase as a uh, free energy minimum. Free energy minimum would mean such configuration contribute to path integral. So if we, we you know, make a plot, a hi histogram of a plug group, we see two peaks. And these two peaks correspond to two minima of free energy. But the free energy maximum would mean rare and less important configuration. So this is deep of the histogram. So if we identify this deep and then constrain in a body of P to here and the simulation, we can pick up a small black hole. So this way, actually, we, by uh, looking an important sample in important sampling, we can study free energy maximum. And maybe we can study 11 dimensions black hole uh, this way. And finally, uh, natural question is, uh, what is this phase transition from string theory to M theory in matrix model language? And a similar question is, what is this phase transition in 4D supermills in terms of uh, Yamils observable? And there is uh, some, oh, sorry, there is some partial answer. Uh, uh, from uh, almost 20 years ago. And the Sandborg and uh, Aharoni and the collaborators did weak coupling analysis of 4D super mills. And according to their result, it's likely that this phase transition is a so-called gross weak and wadia phase transition. So if we plot 
if we can uh, write a product loop to be the sum of phase factors, n phase factors, and this theta is between plus pi and minus pi. And at large n, we can imagine continuous distribution of theta. So this is a, this law is a distribution of Frankel-Fry phases. And in confined phase, it's completely flat. And the, along this dotted line, it's uh, something like this. It, this is not uniform, but uh, everywhere non zero. And probably this turning point, this, this point is where gap this gap appears. This is so called the gross witten wadia phase transition. And probably this is uh, the M theory, string theory phase transition. And uh, I don't have time to explain, but uh, it uh, corresponds to some sort of uh, onset of confinement, so called partial confinement. So this is my final slide. <laughs> Sorry that I uh, uh, spent too much time. So numerically, we observed confinement phase in these brain matrix model. It is qualitatively consistent with M theory description. And we had to say qualitatively because uh, uh, partly precision of our simulation is not good enough and the energy is not big enough. And partially, we don't fully understand the gravity uh, side. But I think this is a promising observation. And uh, we might be able to study 11 dimensional black string and the black hole via holography looking at the deep in a histogram. And uh, honestly, I have to say, better understanding regarding the gravity side <laughs> is needed to make this uh, story much sharper. And the more numerical experiments are needed to make a stronger claim. So in the audience, people like Anos Joseph, Toby Wiseman uh, are working on this kind of simulation of this brain matrix model for some time. So if they can independently check our statement, that would be very nice, I think. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for this great and wonderful talk. <laughs> uh, hi, you seem to, oh, you're today, okay. Okay, let's have some questions now. Yeah, maybe I missed something uh, in the polycov loop histograms that you showed for confined and being of free confined phases. So, uh, did you check the uh, end dependence or something that how how these were changing or um... so what we can see is that uh, at this specific temperature we didn't do but uh, uh, from this in a confined phase for example mm -hmm. we could see that when n is changed for mm -hmm. goes to zero at the infinite end right? right that would mean that means if we erase, so this is n equals to 16, but if mm. n increases, this peak becomes uh, like this, okay. and eventually it goes to zero. Okay. And this okay. peak doesn't move much, but it becomes sharper and sharper. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, thanks. I think this is a nice picture. <laughs> uh, in the context of topological strings, uh, Wafa, Reshetikin, Okunko, and many others, they have proposed something called quantum foam and this melting crystal idea. Where does that fit in with what you are seeing? Because uh, the way I think of it is that main partitions come from B0. So it's in the context of Kalabiyawa compactifications. So it's tied to A on Kalabiyawa threefold. But nevertheless, even there, I think of what they're doing as in the sense of zero D0, D2 configurations. And uh, so that is this whole picture of crystal melting. How I, I know you are doing it in non-compact space time. How does mm -hmm. your picture compare with this idea of uh, quantum foam? So uh, firstly, I have to admit that uh, I'm not uh, you know following the detail of that direction. But is it possible? Is, uh, as long as we consider BFSS uh, connection may be angry, but maybe if we go to BMN matrix model, then uh, we can have a fuzzy sphere configuration, which are kind of D2, and then D2 brain configuration. 
and maybe bound state of Z0 and D2 can appear. And hopefully in BMA matrix model, some uh, uh, analytic theoretical consideration from uh, string theory side can be easier maybe. I Honestly, I haven't uh, thought about it, uh -huh. but if we can discuss and you know, we yeah. At yeah, I mean, but it, even C three is a, C three is also a non compact Calabria, so <laughs> so that way one can then there'll be no D two brains, but there will be just D zero brains, and then uh -huh. the partition function is that of plane partitions, and uh, so so these look like crystals which melt in some limit. So that should uh, that like a, that should be the closest to what you to your simulations, and so. Okay, okay. So it's also related to collections of D zero brains. Exactly. So my uh, honest uh, uh, response is that probably after they stop filming it, maybe we can <laughs> chat a little bit and you can show the reference and we can chat. That would be yeah. very helpful okay. for me. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah, I have a such a very general question. So this Monte Carlo time because that you are seeing uh, that you, this runaway directions open up, right? Uh, this should not be present in the BMN case, right? I mean, uh, so. in a flat direction doesn't exist uh, in a strict sense, but actually tunneling to other fuzzy sphere can take place. Uh, no, of course can. Then I'll see. But uh, and just uh, one thing is, uh, what can you learn from this? I mean, is it is it on its own? It's interesting observing, right? So you mean what we can do by going to BMN? No, no, no. Um, this particular time that it takes to for this for the when it becomes uh, uh, that it stops being flat, is it something you can learn from this? Uh, this is a general question. I mean. You mean uh, from this time scale? You mean yeah, quote unquote time, time scale. scale. Yeah. yeah, that's very good question. But uh, uh, so far, uh, if we just look at uh, uh, this time scale, then it's hard because uh, there are many parameters in a Monte Carlo simulation, and uh, uh, like like uh, how how big a change is uh, uh, made at each step. If a change at each step is uh, very small, then it takes longer time for this to, to take place, right? So we, uh, but there is uh, some way to know, uh, measure such uh, co correlation between uh, uh, configurations. And after some adjustment, maybe we can uh, make a, uh, pre more precise, uh, uh, we can make this uh, time, time scale more precise by using the notion of independent samples. And that probably corresponds to, from that probably we can see the height of uh, this height. Yeah, this is what I was also thinking. Yeah, probably, so if this is a delta F, then time scale is related to exponential delta F over T or something. And uh, that's possible. I haven't tried yet, actually. What do we usually happens is, is, is if n is small, we see tunneling immediately. If n is big, we never see tunneling. <laughs> but uh, to make such analysis, you know, like uh, I said just now, we need several different values of uh, n, which shows random behavior. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't have enough sample. Okay, another kind of very really speculative and stupid question, perhaps. How do you know that like not monkey black hole solutions or these kind of phases? I mean, how do you how how, how do you are sure that you are mapping out all those? Multi, uh, multi uh, black hole. You mean uh, multi center solution is uh, multi center solutions or of that something of that kind? In a, so first, firstly, in in type two F phase. Uh, Let's go back to this slide. So we, we so this the, so, so we tame the flat direction. Okay, so we consider the single uh, single bunch, all the zero brains sitting together. So 
the, this this requirement by this requirement probably we are uh, excluding the possibility of a multi-center black hole i think uh but i think in type 2a region that's fine and in m theory region it's not really clear because if uh, m theory circles opens up and then along that s1 direction maybe multi-center black hole can uh, be important but uh, this this constraint only talk about uh, a nice special dimension which is manifest in string so i don't know how m3 circle location in m3 circle is uh, encoded in matrix model so about uh, that direction i don't know but uh, in a string uh, parameter region probably this this, const this requirement by this requirement we are focusing on this single center black hole yeah, I mean, probably, uh, yeah, you have, uh, you don't have like, if you kind of fix some charge or something, you can see. Yeah. See and probably if we go to BMN, probably it's not multi center black hole, but the various fatty sphere configuration. By using that, we can play with such questions, I think. Can I make a comment, Masanori, on that? Mm -hmm. um, I think when you're at finite temperature, mm -hmm. you don't have supersymmetry. So I think it would um, be very surprising to have multi-centered black holes. So without supersymmetry, they attract with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's only when only you know special supersymmetric configurations can exactly balance and you have multi-centers. Otherwise, you generically won't. Okay. Uh, thank but, you. Yeah, indeed. That should be the case. Yeah. I'll give it for extremal solution to have this. Yeah, but yes, I mean, one of the most interesting things about these simulations is you're really not looking at supersymmetric ground states. You're really looking at uh, thermal physics that breaks supersymmetry. Thank you. Okay, so further questions? Uh, if not, let me officially end this. People can stay on. Uh, uh, so thanks uh, to Masanari again for this great breakthrough yeah. talk, and uh, and also thanks for everybody for participating and joining us, uh, especially Toby, Anosh, uh, and all these people. Uh, so good. So I'm ending now, and let's carry on uh, is informally. Okay.